probably kind of like the MC. And so right. try to keep the, the questions concise and I'll keep it. Uh, we are live. Uh, so let's see here. We should be, we have 22 people on. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. So let's see here. Okay, let's see. We have 23 people live. So we're going to wait. Uh, I'm going to see here in the chat. Hey, guys. Hey, Tony, Samson, Crystal, Darcy. Uh, can you hear and see me? I'm Tony. And then, Mayor, could you say something? Hi there. How's everybody doing today? And you should be able to see a little uh, a chat window there. Can you see that? I, I, I can see the chat window. I just click on chat and they should be seeing messages there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Dean see says, it sounds looks here. perfect. I don't know hey, about the Derek, looks, but I'm glad that the, the, the sound is working. Cool. All right. Well, we have 26 people coming on board. People are still, so we'll give it a um uh, give it a few minutes this is a uh for those who are joining thank you for joining on time this is a new um a, or a different platform most of you are probably used to zoom or or go to webinar this is called webinar jam uh the, the the good thing is there's nothing to download and it works in your phone it works on your browser uh and um so there should be it, it should work fine and uh you have a uh, if you're on a computer at least on the right hand side you have a sidebar so it's just some housekeeping items for, for those um, uh, of you joining us here on the front end. On the sidebar, there's three little dots. You, if, if you don't see a sidebar, click on those dots and it'll expand and you will see um, uh, different things will come up there. And actually I will do, I don't think anybody else sees any chat now. So I'm gonna see about doing the chat, making it oh, enable chat. Oh, there we go. So the attendees, let's go to the chat. Oh, wow, wow. Whew, we got a lot of folks here. Hey, Dan, Sharon, George, chat. Okay, so everybody can see everybody's chat. So be, be mindful of that, uh, you know, only type appropriate things or we'll have to ban you. Um, no, I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's a chat. Now don't put your, um, uh, we, we see here people who wanna, uh, ask a question and so forth. We will have a Q and A uh, session, and I will be able to, you know, get people in uh, to ask a question. We'll ask some questions. We'll we'll see in the, in the question field what the questions are. We'll touch on those. Uh, look at that. We're hitting thirty people, and then I'm actually able to bring people in to um, to ask your question live, and you'll be on here, and we'll see your mug if you have a camera. If nothing else, we'll hear you, and we can ask the mayor. Uh, uh, directly. So in 1103, people still coming on board. Paul says, get with it. Yes, yes, we're going. But everybody that was here on time, we want to be respectful of them. So, uh, Mayor, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, I'm Tony Kovarik. I think most people uh, know me. If you don't know me, I'm a small business owner in San Diego, also the volunteer chairman of the Republican Party of San Diego County, although this is not uh, about uh, Republican or Democrat. This is about Santee, and we have the mayor graciously uh, spending some time with us to give us some updates. The elephant in the room, of course, is you know the coronavirus and so on. So uh, I wanted to uh, turn it over to the mayor. Mayor, thank you for uh, joining us. And if you want to you know, give some opening remarks, we have over 30 people joining us here, and it uh, uh, looks like everybody is in a good mood here, so that's great. Um, so maybe just Give us some some opening remarks and welcome, and then um, uh, some some good news about or you know what's going on with Corona virus. What's the situation in uh, in Saint T? How are you handling that? How's the council handling it? And then um, a couple of uh, good things that we may not know that are happening in uh, in Saint T. So I'll, I'll prompt you along the way if you, but uh, I'll turn it over to you for a few minutes. All right, great. Well, first of all, thanks uh, Tony for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, a lot of the folks that uh, are out there have seen me doing videos throughout the uh, last three, four weeks, specifically some letters and trying to keep everybody up to date on what's going on. And I really appreciate everybody that's come online and uh, I can see it now. We're up over 30 people. 
Uh, that's really great. Uh, I'm going to try and make sure that I look into the camera. It's so easy if you're watching now also to know to look down at the person that's speaking. But I want to speak to you directly, so I'm going to do my best to speak into the camera. So what's going on in Santee? Well, Santee is like every other city. Uh, we're hit hard by um, the orders that have been given out by the state of California and by the county of Ca uh, San Diego, the public health nurse. We've watched the news uh, that's been coming out from the county, uh, watching those press conferences. And uh, quite frankly, if you're like me, you're asking the question, okay, what's happening next? What's, what can't we do next? Uh, as of you know, today, or actually, uh, you could go to a beach, but you know, all you can do is jump in the water and do a little kayaking and stuff like that but you can't lay out and get some sun and things of that nature. So it's good that you can at least get out to the beach. And then the big thing is what's going to happen with our parks. Well, Santee has had to close our parks just like everybody else. But the, the really great thing is, is that we've been able to keep our trails open and our trails do go through at least one of our biggest parks, our main park, which is Mass Park in Santee. And I've been out there and I've seen what's going on and people are staying a safe distance. There are a lot of people are wearing the mask and speaking of mask, uh, the next thing that we have to do is starting Friday, May 1st, everybody has to wear a mask in public. And I don't know about you, but I don't really like putting that on my face, so. but, uh, but we have to do it. And there's a lot of laws that, you know, pertain to that. People are asking me, John, why don't we just uh, do what we want to do? We're the city or the mayor, just make it happen. And uh, I'd love to do that. Because, quite frankly, I'm, I, you know, I, I like going to the coffee shop. I like seeing all the people, and I like talking to everybody. And, uh, uh, by the way, if you want to, you can put your phone on mute, uh, <laughs> which is what I forgot to do. Uh, apologize for that. Um, but, um, I like going out, and I like chatting with people and seeing them. I like smiling and, and letting people know that I know that, uh, you know, they're – you know, they're right. I recognize them. So, um, so what's going on? Well, we got an assessment form from the county. Our staff is working on it today and we have to get it in tomorrow because I want to open up our parks by Friday. That's the good thing. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we have to do in order to make that happen. And if you want to go to the County of San Diego's website, and uh, you'll see where it says uh, there are parks and beaches, and then one that says golf courses. And those take an assessment form, and I'm not going to read all through it right now because, quite frankly, it's, you know, a several-page form. Uh, but you can see what hoops we have to jump through in order just to get our parks open again. But we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. Uh, we're going to have to have people out there, though, making sure that people are staying that safe distance from each other, wearing masks. Uh, I want people to go back in the dog parks. Uh, you know, you think it's tough being shut in as a person. I, I can't imagine what it's like being a dog and being shut in, not being able to run around, especially if you got used to it. So we are going to get those things open for you. Last week, I put together a working group that is comprised of a bunch of people that have experiences in everything from manufacturing to fast food uh, to sit down restaurants. And uh, I even invited the operator of the Santee drive-in because I want to hear what's going on from people that are having troubles and and ideas what they can do what we can do to get things open again because it really is a partnership we we all have to kind of brainstorm about this and it's kind of like having a kitchen cabinet or inviting a bunch of people over to my house and saying okay what kind of ideas do you have so um you may have heard about that i originally called it my blue ribbon committee but you know i had some you know backlash on that because People thought that it was a actual city committee, and it's not. Uh, but uh, but uh, we're going to be operating as a working group, and 
Uh, so we're going to have fun with it. And and the reason why I say that is because we're getting to meet, meet new people because Vice Mayor Laura Koval, she's going to help me run the thing. And uh, she brought in some people that she knows and some friends. And so it's going to be kind of fun and get to some advice. And eventually, maybe we'll be able to bring some of those ideas to the city council and to staff. And that can help them get us rolling. Now, it's interesting because uh, people say, oh, why are you doing this now? And the answer is because our hope is that we're going to have some modifications to these health orders in the next 30 days. Are they going to happen? We don't know for sure, but we have hope that they will. And we want to be prepared. Uh, I have some of my personal ideas about getting restaurants up and running again, for instance. I, I like to see uh, opening up some of the patio dining. i give you an example. Let's say Janet's, which has some dining in the front uh, of the business, and then they have the restaurant portion and then the back patio. And that's another restaurant that's right over there by Mass Park. And so if you have a certain number of tables in front, maybe you could only open a few of them. Inside, open a few, and in the back patio, open a few. And that's an example where you can actually get the restaurant open, you get people there, and keep them that safe distance. And um, But it helps to get the economy going. And that's just one example. There's going to be a lot more examples along the way. Uh, so let's see what else is going on in Santee. I, our website uh, at uh, cityofsanteeca.gov, you can go there and click on a green button that says uh, Park and Recreation, and it will take you some ideas for different uh, virtual activities that you could do, and then ideas about what you can do at home. Uh, my wife and I, we've, uh, you know, broken out some of our old game that, you know, like Monopoly and things like that and and uh, are playing games, uh, building puzzles. Um, if you have kids, uh, uh, we don't have any kids here, so, but uh, we've even thought about coloring books. Uh, so we're, we're looking at, um, you know, some of those ideas. Uh, but the most important part is that uh, we're all in this together. Uh, my wife, she's uh, coined a phrase, she hung a sign in the window that said, hang tough Santee. And so I've been uh, stealing that line because I think we should hang tough. And and I know Santee people and they do hang tough. I've known for some of them for a long time. When I look over here at the uh, list of people that are in here and I recognize some of the names and, um, you know, I want to thank some of you for being here because some of you are acquaintances, but have also become very good friends. And I appreciate everything that everybody's doing out yeah. in the community. Everybody's on here. Uh, because we, we made it open to, of course, everybody who lives or works in Santee, but also we put it to everybody who loves Santee. So I know there are people who recreate in Santee. It's a great uh, city and, and, and uh, you're providing um, great leadership. I know uh, I'm here reading some of the, the, um, uh, the comments. People are you know, looking around and, and some things um, you know, kind of don't make sense. You can ride a bus and, and be in there with a bunch of people, but you can't sit in a park on a little, on a blanket, two people. Uh, and that, so some of those things kind of don't make sense. And I know, know that you've been um, advocating for Santee, for common sense, you know, to the county level. And then, of course, yeah. hopefully they can transmit that over to, uh, to the state level. But um, uh, what, uh, what's what been your interactions uh, uh, with the county and how do you express uh, Santee's uh, sentiments and so forth, uh, priorities to, to the county? You know, I got to tell you that, I, I, okay, I want to I wanna be kind here, but um, it's difficult because the county hasn't been very cooperative in working with cities. Matter of fact, uh, my understanding is that County Board of Supervisors hasn't been working very well with each other. So uh, I get as frustrated as as you do. Uh, the fact that uh, my wife and I, we love to go over and get a cup of coffee and go sit at the park and, and watch people play, the kids run around and stuff like that. And it, the question is, how does that, you know, cause a problem? And I guess what they're telling us is that, 
well, you don't know who's been at that uh, bench. You don't know who's been at that picnic table. And you don't know if they've put droplets or, you know, left something behind that could give you uh, uh, the, the disease. And, and I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. I just have to go with what the professionals tell me. I'm not a chemist, so I don't know how that works. I'm not a biologist, so we have to take uh, lessons from the people that are in those fields and that are giving us the best direction. Um, I know that it doesn't make sense to me. A lot of things they're talking about, uh, like, for instance, uh, we can stand in line, whether we have a mask on or not, but six feet apart at Vaughn's, where there's hundreds of us going in there at one time, it seems like it's hundreds anyways, and that's okay, but I can't open Kohl's up that has a lot less people but could work under the same conditions, have six foot row limit, uh, and people go in and they can get their, you know, the, a new shirt if they need it, a new T-shirt, or, or whatever. Um, I don't understand the reasoning behind why some things would be closed or not uh, that are considered non-essential because, uh, you know, uh, it's just like a, a dry cleaner. Um, uh, why is that non-essential? Uh, people still need to get their clothes cleaned, especially those who are have to wear suits and wear ties and things that we just can't throw a suit jacket in the washing machine. And uh, there's you can still limit the contact. So I, these are the things that I think of. And whether you're the mayor or not, or you're a council member or anybody else, I think you think of the same things. And so when we ask the questions, why are, are these things non-essential? It's because it's, uh, we're told, because it's on the list. Well, I, I think that we have to, you know, ask the questions, you know, at what point in time is the uh, uh, is the list overreaching, uh, and why can't we open things up? And, and I, I'm I know I think about those things, and I know others think about that because they do ask those questions. So um, you know, uh, maybe we could try and get to some some more questions and things, or some comments, and and I can tell you my feelings about them. Yeah, I actually have a couple of uh, polls. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I actually have a couple of polls in this uh, system uh, where we I'm going to ask people exactly like how, where do they how do they feel. Uh, so maybe that's a, a good way to uh, I want to test uh, a poll. So on on the right hand side of your screen, uh, you should have a little sidebar. If you don't have a sidebar, there's three buttons. You can click on that. It'll expand the sidebar. Uh, but I'm going to put a poll out there. First, this one will be a little lighthearted. We'll work our way up to the more serious ones. Uh, but first one, just to see, and if you're on a phone, I don't quite know. I think you have to scroll up if you're on your phone. I think most people are probably on a computer and a browser. Uh, but uh, I'm going to publish a poll here. And uh, just to start things out, a little bit lighthearted, uh, get some interactivity uh, going. So the question is, have you watched Tiger King? On Netflix yet? Absolutely, no, but I probably will. No way, too overhyped. Or what's Tiger King? Um, so we'll see how Santee feels about this very, very important question uh, that we're all faced with. Um, so I'll leave it up for a few more seconds. If you haven't voted, you know, go ahead and vote, and uh, we'll display the results. The mayor and I are, are seeing the result. You're seeing it come in, right, uh, Mayor? You see the results, right? And then, I am. Yes. yeah. So they're, they're kind of changing in percentages. So we'll see. We have forty people on right now, by the way. So we really have to uh, <laughs> uh, to be professional. But so, all right. Last call to vote. If you haven't voted, what do they say in the legislature? All vote who wish to vote. All vote who wish to vote. That's what they say up in Sacramento. I think in D.C. So all right, we're going to end the poll, and we're going to publish the results. There we go. Looks like people in Santee are like, eh, too overhyped. Uh, although quite a few people have, have watched the whole thing. And then some people are just, you know, I have to say I'm in the no way too overhyped. I don't know if you want to volunteer an opinion, Mayor, but maybe it's too controversial of a topic. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I, I got to tell you, I've been stuck at this darn computer. It seems like, you know, sometimes 10 hours or more a day. 
uh, reading and uh, watching, uh, you know, information coming out. So I, I, I barely have even sat in front of the TV in uh, weeks now, which uh, probably hasn't hurt me any. But I, as far as I just learned that there was even something called Tire King out there. So I, I don't have any. Uh, well, um, the uh, I know you've you've done some videos. You know where? Uh, how how do people get on? I know you, you, you regularly once a week or something. How often do you do the videos? I know there's a county supervisor Jim Desmond does them, and people do find them um, uh, helpful. I know you've done a couple of them. Where can people find them, and how often do you plan on doing them? Well, I uh, I try and do them as as often as possible. Actually, I don't want to just keep saying the same thing over again. Once, maybe twice a week, depending on how quickly things come out. I'm doing my own uh, YouTube and Facebook videos for um, you know off of my Facebook page, and then. Um, a lot less often, but every once in a while, the city or uh, public information officers say, hey, John, uh, I have some things that I want you to put out. Would you mind doing that? And so I'd say, okay. So that those are coming out less frequency, uh, uh, frequent. Uh, however, they uh, are on the city's website, and then the city posts those up uh, via Vimeo and uh, Facebook, I believe. And okay. they're on a whole range of topics. Well, um, on that uh, topic, actually, we have um, the mayor has a Facebook page, and so in your sidebar there, if you're not following him, uh, connect with him on Facebook quite yet, then uh, I will put this on your sidebar, and you should be getting a prompt about connecting with the mayor on Facebook. So if you click on that, yes, take me there. I'll get you to the, uh, the open up a new window and get you a Facebook. Um, the mayor's Facebook page, and you can, you can, um, uh, you, you, can check me out there. You, you know, Tony, I, I want to point out something. You talk about, uh, you know, Supervisor Desmond and then the county doing their uh, press conference and stuff like that, and then I'm doing videos. Uh, there's a big difference between what uh, I do and what they do, is, for instance, because uh, they have a, a they go down to the uh, city uh, county building and they sit at their desk and they have their public information officers come in and they uh, do the filming and everything and i'm sure they probably do the editing for them also uh, the difference is that i uh, sit out in my backyard and i have my uh, either my iphone or my 35 millimeter camera that i put on i do have a tripod uh, but then i have a ladder with uh, a um, little step on it that I put my computer on so that I can see my notes. And uh, if you ever saw what I was doing, you it would be even more archaic than, you know, the 1920s when Cecil B. DeMille was filming with the big cans. But, uh, the, the, so they're not professional in any way. I try and snazz, uh, make them a little bit snazzier than than just, you know, a, you know, live, I, Facebook page, but I do some of that too. But you know, the idea is, I, I just I, I want people to see and hear from their mayor, and know that 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 we're working in the background. There's a lot going on that, that you don't even see or hear about. And quite frankly, if we did, we'd be on there all day long. And so, but I want people to know that I, sometimes I try and I make them a little bit lighter because. I, I, I think is my job and, and just as a person who cares, uh, I want to make sure that people have hope because there is a good reason to have hope here because we are going to get through this. This is not going to be like the 1918 pandemic that lasted 36 months. Uh, we have technology and we have biologists and epidemiologists that are all over this and and uh, they may say things that we don't even understand, but uh, but we know that they're working hard and they're working hard to help us. Um, so, you know, I just want to make uh, one comment here because uh, uh, Zach, he uh, sent a, a message here. And I, I want to get on that right away because I think a lot of people are um, asking that. And, and, uh, and, you know, Zach and I know each other. We've had a lot of great conversations and he knows that uh, I'm not going to tell anything unless I do my research on it. 
And uh, but he asked uh, basically, who's the government to tell us who is and isn't essential? And it sounds like cherry picking. And uh, you know, Zach and I don't always agree on things, but I'll tell you what, I, I think he might be right here. There could be some cherry picking going on. And somebody said, oh, don't exclude my industry because my industry is is, is essential because we're going to keep people working. And to me, it's like, it's just like what the example I used about Vons versus Kohl's department store. Well, come on, who, who figured that one out and said Kohl's isn't as essential as Vons? Uh, obviously, we need food. But um, but what I want to say to Zach is that, uh, unfortunately, uh, there's about 12 uh, state laws that are uh, contained in the government code and the health and safety code that are very specific about what the governor can do and the public health officer at the county level can do. And then there's even a county code that talked about what the county public health officer can do. And to top all that off, even though we don't agree and we feel that our civil liberties have been violated, and I feel just like you, that I think my civil liberties have been violated also. So I was asking the question, why? What gives them the right to do that? And the research, and I've, I've actually begun writing a paper that's called The Pandemic and Civil Liberties. And what I've learned, and I've spent a lot of hours on this, is that this is something that has been, de been debated uh, at the local level, the state level, and the federal level, and from the lower courts all the way to the United States Supreme Court for over 116 years. Because it was in, two th uh, in uh, 1905 when a case went to the United States Supreme Court, and it's called Jacobson versus Massachusetts where uh, an immigrant from, believe it or not, a place called, I think, Switzerland or someplace like that. That might be someplace close to where you're from, I think, Tony. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, he said, oh, listen, I don't want to get a smallpox vaccination because when I was living in Switzerland, uh, I had an adverse reaction to it. And the government said, no, we have this pandemic. It's a smallpox thing and you have to have it. Well, they didn't force him to take it. They didn't, you know, tie him down and giving him injection, but they did fine him and a whopping $5 fine back then in 1905. And that, that might sound like a, not a big deal, but it, it, what happened is it went to the Supreme court and the Supreme court made a decision that said the States during pandemics and natural disasters and things have absolute police power to invoke these things. They can't hold you down and make you do things, but they can definitely fine you if you don't follow the instructions. Huh. So that's what we're working off of. And, and so I could, I could uh, and my council could say, no, we're not gonna follow the orders of the governor or the county health officer. I don't want to expose, you know, m my council members or my staff to any uh, penalties because we're going to get through this either way. We'll follow the rules. We're going to ask everybody else to follow the rules too. And, um, but no, uh, make it, you know, I want to make this clear that I am not just following these rules like a, you know, the sheep to go over, you know, the, the cliff. I've done my research and I've done my research on behalf of the people, I've uh, gone to my city attorney and had these things, uh, you know, reviewed, my research reviewed, and uh, they agree that these are the laws and they're the laws of the land. Uh, and I hate saying that because as being a police officer for nearly 30 years, uh, it was my job to enforce those rules. And um, whether I liked it or not, but you know what? The only thing I can do is ask our law enforcement officers out there that even though you're given direction, please use the best justice and judgment you can together to make sure that people aren't, the, the, there's not an overreaching power of the government because at some point in time, we're gonna have to decide 
were they overreaching in their decision making? Yeah, and that's a great uh, from you having served as a as a police officer, and then now as mayor, you're seeing this this balance. I mean, I think um, it, it's you know you could be there's some discretion, and 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 if somebody's so anyway, it's a tricky situation. Hopefully, we won't be here uh, for very long. But uh, you know, the laws have to make sense to 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 the people. And uh, I know you're advocating for, for, for Santee on the county level. And of course, we're hoping that they advocate to, to, to the governor. And of course, then the president has his own uh, you know, uh, take on things. What, um, what are, I want to switch it a little bit to, what are some, the two or three best things about Santee? So let's, put, let's switch to something a little more, uh, less uh, dour, although it's a serious situation we all, uh, but uh, what are two or three great things that you've seen in Santee uh, a couple of things uh, in response to this, and just in general, how the community is and and uh, is is helping out and, and dealing and helping. But tell us about Cynthia Strong. Well, I got to tell you that the, the number one thing about Santee is the people that live here. Uh, they are amazing people, and and I you know maybe every mayor says that about the people that live in their cities or their communities. Uh, I talked with a actual reporter yesterday, and this reporter uh, left me with this, you know, thought. He said, John, he says, I've covered from the South Bay to North County to East County. And he's worked for larger magazines and smaller magazines and newspapers. And he said, there's very few mayors that are in public and doing the things that you do and talking to people and getting involved like you. And, and he's quite right, but you know, I'm a retired guy, so I have time to do it. Some mayors have a full-time job, so they can't do it even if they want to. And so having, you know, having somebody say that about me, uh, may, it validates the fact that I do know what people are thinking or what's going on. And I'll tell you what, when I talk to people, they tell me, I don't like what's going on, but John, you know, I, we'll stand behind you and we'll help you and we'll whatever you need from us. You know, Tony, I've got people calling me all the time saying, Hey, what can I do to volunteer? As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> I have um, set up for um, meals to be delivered to shut-ins at our mobile home parks. And tomorrow I'm going to deliver 50 hot meals from a couple of different restaurants in Santee. And um, you know, those are going to be for free. I, I have a donor uh, that called me and said, John, I want to do something. And, and can, can we get restaurants working? I'll, I'll pay for uh, the food to be sent out to these people. And so tomorrow I'm going to um, deliver 50 mils. And uh, who knows where we'll go from there. And uh, volunteers are going to come and do that. We're going to glove up, put masks on, and make sure we're safe because those people that are shut in are vulnerable people. But you know what? The fact that the community is coming out and saying, John, I want to help, is unbelievable because it's just unbelievable. And it's, uh, it's uplifting to me and exciting. Yeah, I, I know all, you know, so many, I have so many friends in Santee and I, I, I probably know half of the people on, on this list here. And so that actually brings us maybe to another, let's do another poll. Uh, and we, uh, we, we dispensed with the Tiger King, you know, uh, in the chat room, there were a lot of uh, strong feelings on that. And I, I haven't seen it myself, but, uh, you know, so we're going to do a, another one uh, about, um, and uh, I'm going to put that on up right now and i think you'll you might get a chuckle out of this uh, mr mayor and so we'll see what the uh the question is what's the best city in san Diego county and why do you say that it's santee <laughs> well that's a loaded question <laughs> well i figured it would uh You know, Tony, I'm going to answer uh, one of these questions while we're uh, doing that poll because uh, it's come up from at least a, a couple of different people. And the, the, and I think this is a great question. But we're hearing about all the coronavirus cases that have been confirmed. Uh, people have died from coronavirus. Uh, the question that's being asked, though, is uh, why, um, why aren't they reporting out the number of people who have recovered? So, 
I, th I think that's going to be a good question. I'm going to do what I can to find out the answer to that. Uh, I don't know if there's somebody that's uh, online right now that might even know the answer to that uh, could let us know. But uh, my guess is, and, and I hate to say this, but it's like uh, many times you go to the doctor, you get better, you never hear any follow-up from it. And so maybe they uh, aren't looking at the uh, follow-up and I think they should because it'd be a good idea that uh, because the I think the way they're reporting out leaves you thinking that there's still 3,000 people out there that are sick. Well, there might only be 500 people that are still sick. Yeah. Um, great point. Uh, so we, I think we have the results. Uh, you and I see the results. Uh, the rest of the, the people that haven't voted, that voted, they haven't seen the results. So I'm going to end the poll, and that way the results will be displayed for everybody. And so there we go. All right. What do you think, Mayor? Uh, very interesting. Um, all the above. <laughs> well, at least I at least fall, fall in all the above, I guess. So yeah, you, think that, uh, uh, the mayor, um, <laughs> you get to be tacked on, uh, uh, tacked on to that. Um, Okay, say so, uh, we're watching. Uh, yeah, you have a great active community uh, in Santee. Uh, I can see the, the questions here. Mary's uh, letter submitted. Uh, okay, we're going to keep it on. Let's see. Uh, uh, so, okay, what else do we have on there? Uh, one of the things that I, and I, I know you're advocating for this, is uh, you, know, you mentioned Kohl's that's closed, and you know, there are, there are people who are on on the margin. You know, if you have a small business, uh, I mean, Kohl's is at least a large business, although people who work there are still, you know, they're members of Santee. Uh, but if you're a small business, you can put in protocol. We all know how to operate. You know, mask, stay six six feet apart, no hand, shaking hands, and so on. So we can get back to things relatively, at least to transact business. And so, um, are you able to uh, uh, you know, convey that? In uh, I know the county, in some ways, I know we had two supervisors who voted to just make preparations to open by May first, which is this Friday, or to, you know, to, to, with pro certain protocols. Uh, but that got voted down, uh, interestingly. So I know we're having a challenge with the uh, uh, with the county. But uh, are you advocating for implementing and reopening with common sense protocols that we all adults know by now and um, are, are you able to to let our county leaders know how people um, uh, my my goal is for instance to get our parks opened again on May 1st uh, it's kind of like what I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, there's a whole laundry list of things that we have to do and you can find those on the website for the county and I suggest you look at those uh, I've talked with uh, the golf course because I think the golf course should be opened up also. I, you know, there's a comment on here about, you know, why would uh, the golf course be closed? People can be a, a distance apart. And, and I agree, uh, you know, some of the, some of the conditions though they're putting on uh, just the, not, not just the parks, but the golf course, uh, you know, one of the silly things is that, they want them to uh, take the temperature of everybody that's going to be on the golf course when they come in, make sure they're not sick. No more than one person to a golf cart, no more than people on a tee. Tee times have to be staggered by, I think it was 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, uh, people have to be out there monitoring. You can't have any rakes at the sand pits. You can't have poles in the ground at the cup. Uh, and things of that nature. And, you know, a lot of these things are actually pretty easy, but, um, you know, you have a staff now that we're waiting on the governor to say whether or not the county can add uh, golf courses to that list. Well, it shouldn't be up to the governor to say golf courses can be added to that list. It should be up to the county. They're allowing other things to be left up to the county and and that uh, they should be. So I want, I'm, I'm, I'm working to make sure that we can try and get those golf courses opened up also by May 1st. I know that I've been in contact with uh, a board member of the Board of Supervisors, Jim Desmond. Uh, he is somebody who's advocating to get beaches open and parks open, 
and uh, Kristen Gaspar, who's advocating heavily to get the um, uh, golf courses open. So we're talking a lot. I've talked with uh, Bill Wells over in El Cajon to ask and see what he's doing, and they're doing the same things. Uh, uh, La Mesa is doing a lot of the same that we're doing. So uh, around, you know, Paul McNamara has uh, been a, become a become a real good uh, ally up there in in Escondido, and he um, is doing a lot of the same things. We're all talking and seeing how we can work things out. Our staffs are um, getting on a weekly meeting that the county is holding. And uh, in Santee, Vice Mayor uh, Koval, she's getting on that meeting for me and hearing about what's going on with the county. And, and we're talking regularly about what's going on. So, you know, we're involved in the conversation. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't think we're being listened to. Um, which is, you know, what a lot of people complain about. People complain that our council don't doesn't listen to them. Uh, fact of the matter is, we do listen. You know, I've, uh, you know, I, I see a couple of uh, questions here uh, that are all political in nature. I don't really want to answer them uh, because no, there's no to, uh, to the topics at hand, and people have strong opinions, and that's all great. But we want to keep it to where everybody yeah. can. Yeah, you know, and uh, some of these folks that uh, that you know talk about the golf course and and relationships and things like that, I'd love to talk to you one on one because I think that you're you're being misinformed uh, by certain people in the community, and um, there's there's really no truth to what you're talking about. So um, uh, and so you know, I'm gonna you know you can send me directly an email. Uh, through this city, uh, give me your phone number. I will call you and I will talk to you and I will tell you anything you want to know. Uh, and uh, there's some people there that uh, on this list, I can tell you that have not always been a supporter of mine. Uh, I see one specific that he and I really got into a, a heavy conversation in his front yard one day. And he and I now are, are, are actually pretty good chums. Um, and uh, we talk a lot about things. And this is a guy that if he has, uh, he doesn't like what I'm saying or what I'm doing, he has no problem telling me what <laughs> what I he thinks about what I'm saying or doing. So yeah, I'd be more than that's, happy to. That's the great thing, you know, local government here is, you know, we can actually, uh, you know, a few of us can, uh, if you can talk to the president or the governor or maybe even our county supervisor, but uh, I want to commend you for being uh, accessible, being available, and I, I see a lot of uh, comments as well that uh, attesting to that, that you're responsive to your to your, uh, to your residents. Uh, so by all means, anyone, I would encourage them to you know, go through the website, ask, and then uh, things that are specific, uh, go through, uh, the mayor will uh, will call you back. So on that note, um, I'd like to, uh, uh, on that note, um, I want to put up another poll, and this is kind of Go back to talking about um, Corona, and I just want to kind of see where people are at. Uh, and so it's basically about how do you feel? Everybody's in a different place on this. I found that some people are really, really uh, afraid, and others are, eh, you know, it's not a big deal. And of course, there's a lot of things in between. So I just want to kind of take a temperature, and I will put this up. And so if you would let us know and let the mayor know how Santee feels. Um, about the uh, the coronavirus uh, situation, and uh, you know, anything. Anytime you, you deal with something like this, there's not really a right or wrong answer. It's just you know, it's very uh, you know, none of us, unless it's somebody that's hundred years old that's on the this webinar, we probably haven't gone through anything similar. So this is our once in a lifetime uh, situation experiment that we're all going through, um, but. Um, I know the mayor can see their, you know, the results coming in, uh, and uh, so we, we. I've done one of these already earlier today with the city of San Marcos, and uh, a lot of these are county issues that uh, uh, people have access to their mayor or council members, and they can reach and talk to them. Uh, unfortunately, the the mayors have little authority on their little. Jurisdiction on this, so I think we're, we'll do another one later in the week, probably with our 
you know, the two county supervisors that have been responsive, which is uh, Chris and Gaspar for kind of central area, and then uh, Jim Desmond for North County. Uh, I will, uh, they've been clearly on the common sense portion of this. So let's see here. So I think if you have, if you haven't voted, you want to vote, this is your chance. All those who wish to vote, please vote. And uh, then we're going to publish, gonna end the poll, three, two, one. Okay, and then there we go. And you should see the results. Tony, for, for the folks that have indicated that they're concerned about opening things too soon, I got to tell you that, that that is also a concern of mine. And uh, so I, I, it's interesting to try and balance between being the mayor and being a member of the community and a person who's obviously affected by this also. The fact that I'm sitting in my home and I'm in this uh, conference and whatnot, it, it goes to show you that, uh, you know, if I was not concerned, I would obviously be out in public a lot more. Um, my wife and I, we've curtailed our trips out to, uh, to, to the grocery store, the farmer's market, and uh, we try and go out at least every two or three days and, you know, help out with some of our restaurants. And uh, so it's, that's, that's making it, you know, it's, it's tough for us to be shut up also. Um, so I, I guess I'm concerned about it because, you know, I, I bring, <laughs> bring my sanitizer. Uh, I wipe my hands and uh, wipe the doorknobs before I go in places. And then when I leave again, and then when I come home, I make sure I wash up really well too. Um, and uh, cause I've always kind of been concerned about germs. At least I've been told that by certain people. Uh, but um, you know, the thing is though that uh, you, just because I, I, I don't want to get sick doesn't mean that I can't get business running again because that's also my job to get business running again. It's interesting. Uh, I was talking to a cousin of mine who lives in Las Vegas, and she talked about the mayor in Las Vegas who made a comment the other night uh, on national television says, says about opening businesses. Well, it's those are the people, the people that are in business, they need to figure this out. It's not my job as the mayor. And that mayor's taking a lot of heat for that. And quite frankly, when it's the mayor and the county board of supervisors and the governor and everybody in between say, no, you can't be open. You can't do business. Well, then you do have an obligation that when you tell people to do business and come back to work, that you at least have a plan to help them get back on their feet and get to work. So that, that lady couldn't have been further from, you know, the, you know, yeah, that, that was a little bit, of, uh, job is. A little bit out there. Uh, we have two questions on, um, I maybe I can combine them, uh, asking about Friday, Santee Lakes and then the drive-in. Any update on that? Uh, or what's the, what can we expect there? Okay, um, as far as the drive-in, you know, I've been in conversation with the uh, owner of the drive-in and uh, it's, it's another one of those crazy situations, uh, you know, about why would you close a drive-in? People are in a car, for goodness sakes. If, if you're not more than six feet away from people, then I don't know what you're doing. You're running around touching other cars. Uh, you could shut that, you know, bring your own popcorn and soda pop, for goodness sakes. You don't have to go to the snack bar. You know, a lot of people do that anyways. You know, stop by and get a, you know, pizza from Pizza Hut or Little Caesars or someplace and take it with you. But, but go to the drive-in, for goodness sakes. At least you're getting out and you're, you know, being, you know, doing something. So, so I don't get that at all. Um, I, I like to make sure that, and, and that's why I asked uh, Dave to come and, you know, tell us how he's been affected. Now, the only part of it that I think that we are going to have a problem with is the swap meet because there's a lot of people that go to the swap meet, things of that nature. But, uh, but once again, the golf course, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, so we're going to work on getting that stuff, uh, up and running as soon as possible. Uh, how about Santee Lakes? Oh, I'm sorry, Santee Lakes. Um, well, actually, Santee Lakes is completely um, uh, under the jurisdiction of the uh, 
Padre Water District, uh, the Padre Dam, uh, because they actually own the property um, and uh, they have protocols that they have to find, uh, follow also. It, they're also a landlord out there because um, they have people that are staying at the campground. And so they have to make sure how they deal with those people and how it remixes. I, I know that they would like to open up as soon as possible also. Uh, you know, holy mackerel. Uh, you know, if you want to go fishing, you know, there's not a lot of fishermen that like to sit within six feet of each other to uh, fish. And so uh, I think uh, for one reason, you, you wouldn't want your, your lines to get mixed up in the water because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to fight you for a fish. So, 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 um, so I, I think it's ridiculous not having the lakes open, but they're under the same guidelines that the rest of us are. Uh, I know that they would like to open as soon as possible also. Okay. Yeah, a lot of these things, uh, we're going to try to do another one. We will do another one. I know with, with uh, Gaspar and, and, and Desmond. So um, if you're not connected with the mayor's Facebook, um, please uh, do so. And then also um, mayor, if people want to reach you, what is the, how do they go to the city and um, send you a message or are there, if there are any questions that we didn't get, get to hear, or if they were so specific that, you know, they're kind of belt, best dealt with one-on-one, -on -one, um, what is the best way to, um, well, the best way of getting hold of me is through the city website, and uh, the email there is jminto at cityofsantica.gov, and uh, that's jminto at cityofsantica.gov. If you send me, uh, you know, I do get a lot of emails, but people don't, so, there's some people don't even tell me what their name is. Uh, they don't leave a phone number or anything else to, to get hold of them. So sometimes I have to try and track them down. Uh, people like to send me messages via Facebook Messenger. Uh, please don't do that. Uh, go to the website and send me a message because, I, you know, I leave, uh, I have to tell you, I leave my Facebook up most of the time, but uh, I don't look at it. So I may not even see a message for a day or two even. So um, that's why it's better if you just go to the website and uh, send, or just send me the email directly uh, through the uh, city email. That's the best way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. So we have a question. Have a way to put that up there on the screen. Yeah. Let's see. Um, uh, I'm gonna put it on the screen. It's uh, Jay Minto. Oops. Oh, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna do this right now. Uh, Jay Minto at City of Santee. Videostantica.gov or just, oh, CA, all of it. There we go. Yeah, all right. All right. Word. Great American. Look at that. City of Okay. So you guys should see, there should be a little sticky note. Uh, right. So that should come up. So just copy and paste that. Um, um, and uh, uh, so we will uh, make sure, you know, deal with any. You know, questions that you know, don't get answered here. I want to uh, just maybe close, and then you can have some closing remarks. But I want to thank you for for uh, serving uh, as mayor. It is a or being an elected official. It is uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. It's very it sounds like well the mayor of this and so on. And of course, uh, we respect uh, that position and so on. But it is for those people may not appreciate. There's a lot of flack that comes with it. You're in the middle. You 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 have to. You have to, you're elected to make decisions. And uh, um, some things you have control over, some things you don't have control over. Sometimes there's a, there's a council, the mayor doesn't rule supreme. Uh, but nonetheless, we do elect uh, people to serve as, as mayor. And I wanna uh, thank you for being the man in the arena, especially during this, uh, this difficult uh, time and uh, challenging and unprecedented time. So thank you for being, uh, keeping your head cool, for being level-headed, for being uh, accessible. Uh, and uh, just for, you know, take, nobody gets rich uh, serving as mayor. This is a volunteer. Uh, yes, you're retired, so maybe you don't have another job to, to balance this with, but nonetheless, it's, it's a lot of work for, uh, uh, and you get a lot of headaches, uh, but uh, I know it's uh, rewarding serving a great city like, uh, like Santee. But just thank you for, for being the mayor, and thank you for uh, your leadership. And uh, with that, if you want to make any closing remarks, and we invite everybody to, to email you at that email address. So, uh, John? 
Sure. Yeah, I, I just want to say thanks for everybody that came out. We had almost 50 people. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, number, I think. And uh, there's a lot of questions here. Um, like I say, I didn't want to get political. I don't want to break this down between Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or, or otherwise. I, I just wanted to answer some straight questions about what's going on in Santee. Uh, I know that there's uh, some folks here that want some very specific question answered. Um, send me an email, give me your phone number, and I'll talk directly to you. Uh, and, you know, I may not like the question. Uh, I may not like what you say, but that's just too bad. Uh, I'm going to answer the question anyway. Um, you know, the only thing that I ask is that as we go through this, all the different processes, whether it's regarding the opening and closing of parks or beaches or businesses or getting back to work or not getting back to work, anything else. All I ask is people to show me the same respect that I would show them. I don't call people names and I don't necessarily appreciate when they call me names. So, um, you know, this is a tough times and that's why I want uh, Santee, like my wife says, Santee, hang tough, or hang tough, Santee. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, want everybody to have, whether they're shut in or not, have a great Santee day. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, stay healthy, and uh, there'll be a replay of the webinar uh, a couple in a couple of hours in, in your email box, and uh, perhaps we'll, uh, we'll look at a feedback and so forth, and perhaps we'll do this again. So, Mayor, thank you for making yourself available. Everybody, uh, God bless, take care. Uh, wherever you are, and uh, stay healthy. Over and Thank out. You.